Did you worry about feeling shame about the fact that you were gay or coming out as gay? What do you think yeah. about phase? Like, people often will be like, guys go through a gay phase. Yes. I guess for me it was very like daunting. Oh, is this actually? Yeah, it's recording. Oh, I didn't realize you were recording. Yeah. <laughs> well, you were just discussing it in your head and then talking all along. No. Okay, <laughs> right. <laughs> I'm ready to be filmed. Tell me when. You need like camera action. <laughs> <laughs> So, I'm here with Tom, and uh, yeah, so this is Tom. Hi. Tom Moran. So, we're going to talk about kind of, I guess, your experiences as a gay guy yeah. um, from, from the perspective of me who is not gay. I think it would be really cool if people have more understanding of what the experience and the feelings that go along with being gay are so that they can better empathize with that sort of experience. So, I'm Tom. I'm uh, I identify as being gay. I'm really keen to get an idea of just what it means to be gay and really to kind of, I guess, question you on how um, sort of you realise that you're gay and, and what, at what point kind of, is it something that happens immediately? Is it something that kind of you just suddenly wake up and realise you're gay or is it something that develops over time? It's a question around, do you have the language right now to know how to identify. For me, I felt like I always knew I had these feelings towards those of the same sex. What kind of age are we talking here? Is this like mm. forever or...? No, I, I think more around like yeah, being 12 and 13 right, yeah, sort of the sort age of, like, of puberty, puberty yeah, really. Yeah, yeah. Where I think most people like sort of figure yeah, this yeah. stuff out. I think people use the word gay but I think they themselves don't always know what gay means. means they just right. feel like it's a derogatory term. Yeah. So I can remember probably going home and asking my parents like, oh, people have been saying like, you know, oh, I'm gay or like, this is gay. Yeah, yeah. What does so gay, gay mean? Yeah. And then it's through understanding what that word means that maybe I was like, oh, yeah. Oh, that identifies me, but oh, okay, that's been used as a negative. Maybe, it, and then maybe it's that. Then you start to realize that oh, maybe you don't want to assign to it because it yeah. has these negative connotations to it. And then that, I think, brings and builds the fear of maybe coming out. I was still thinking about this from my own like experiences. Because I almost remember, I don't know if you had the same, I guess it sounds yeah. awful, but but like almost like a fear of being gay myself, if that makes sense. In the sense that I think lots of young guys at that age, or and girl, anyone mm. really, have kind of questions about their own sexuality. Mm. And I remember sort of almost having a... Yeah, I guess the fear of, yeah. of saying that I could be gay, like, do yeah. I find men attractive? You know, those questions yeah. that go through your head. Yeah, and so, I think that comes from it being perceived in a negative, negative way. Negative way, yeah, yeah, exactly. Because you wouldn't want to put yourself out there in a way that would sort of put you as a victim of yeah. bullying. When did you kind of come to terms with... Or, or what so, is... yeah, I kind of struggled with that um, and wrestled with the idea of identifying as gay. Um, definitely because of the educational upbringing that I had in an, yeah. sort of an all boys school. It's yeah. very sort of... We shared that. <laughs> yeah. Definitely like a very heterosexualized yeah. culture. Um, and so by that, I did definitely experience the word gay being thrown around in very derogatory terms and ways. Yeah. Um, and it was only really until sort of I stepped out of that and I moved to college, which was more mixed sex and more open okay. and they had sort of an LGBT uh, mentor and person on board right. that I sort of so at identified this point, it as, yeah, as maybe something that I could identify as. You're say 14, 15, 16, that's, at that point you are aware yeah. that you're gay but mm. haven't come out or? Yeah, it was only really until I was 16 that right. I felt like, yeah, this definitely fits Isn't a phase. my narrative. Or what, what, how do you, what do you think about yeah. phase? Like people often will be like, guys go through a gay phase or something like is yeah I've definitely heard it um, and I definitely experienced that term being used when I was coming out mm -hmm. um, but I think you know it inside to not be true mm -hmm. because it doesn't feel like a temporary state mm -hmm. it doesn't feel like something that is going to change and evolve it definitely just feels as a part of you So, I guess we've we've talked about how you came to identify as gay and I guess what being gay is for you and kind of how you came, yeah, how you reached a point where you, yeah. at least in yourself, were comfortable with identifying as gay, right? Mm -hmm. But then, I guess it's a whole 
different process then to go from I myself recognize myself as being gay yeah. to actually opening that up into the world so no, I agree how was that. your experience in terms of coming out and 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 that process of of sharing what you knew yeah. was inside you with others mm-hmm. I, guess. I guess for me it was very like daunting yeah um, because it is like we've discussed before it was sort of identifying as something that you'd always been seen as sort of negative yeah. um, or portrayed in a way that the language it what itself was like derogatory yeah. um, so really for me um, identifying it I also was like worried about broaching it with my family mm-hmm. so for me I really just reached out to sort of friends and sort of best friends that I felt instantly would no matter what I said accept me uh, yeah. for who I am so who was the first person you told like not by name but was that like a best friend yeah it was a best friend right, okay. um, it was someone outside of the school environment I felt comfortable confiding in them because I knew that deep down no matter what I said they yeah. would fully accept that that was sort of the stepping stone to then coming out to sort of the rest of my family and the rest of the world yeah all, almost when you come out so do you tell one person that best friend or whatever yeah. and then do they keep you obviously like tell them you don't want them to mm. tell other people yeah but so it kind of stays in this sort of closed bubble of people to start with is that right i believe yeah it's a good way of putting it actually i think it is sort of this bubble um and sort of sphere of inclusion yeah I guess. yeah, yeah as you like mean. and then you've become more confident in mm-hmm. So sort of being open with that friend be, yeah. and what that and sort of exploring how being open feels in that moment um, and then really just from gaining confidence in yourself and, and sort of sharing that sort of fear that you've had yeah. for so long uh, with someone else and, and how that feels you then sort of gain and grow and feel maybe more empowered to sort of come yeah. out to sort of more challenging figures more yeah. figures that you've grown up with that you know have had this sort of idea of who you're going to be and who you're going to be with um, and sort of changing that narrative with them is quite daunting so having that confidence at the start I think is really really important I guess it's also great to really come out to a group of friends and a, a, a group that will support you no matter what because just in case coming out doesn't go necessarily well you're always there to fall back on and they're always there to then yeah exactly lift you up lift you up did you feel any sense of like shame I guess or worry about feeling shame about the fact that you were gay or coming out as gay was it like this grand moment of like I've told my best friend now I'm free like liberated to be gay or was it like (laughs) almost like a sense of shame of, of revealing or is it a bit of both I think you still have that moment of doubt no matter if you believe that friend to be fully accepting no matter what you still have that doubt that your relationship as a friend could change and so you do have like shame in that moment but i guess when that coming out to a friend goes well yeah so it's only with i guess with time yeah that you then sort of uh, it's like peeling and you you cocooned yourself almost in all of this like fear and doubt and worry about Mm -hmm. coming out and broaching that subject and i think by sort of revealing that and um, mm-hmm. healing that like almost in the, that analogy yeah. you then become more comfortable to be like yeah your authentic self this is cool <laughs> okay so we're talking <laughs> yeah. now about relationships <laughs> yeah we're going nitty gritty although not too nitty gritty <laughs> <laughs> no so we're going to talk about relationships and basically yeah. like the experience I guess mm-hmm. um, so I was saying that I have had a girlfriend for ages and like when I met her I met her at school yeah. and like I felt obviously like there was a pretty decent chance that meeting a girl mm-hmm. it was likely she be straight would be straight yeah <laughs> how does it feel to I guess go around like life like unsure <laughs> yeah who is open to being in a relationship or even you know yeah kind of and I guess I guess it's it goes back to when I was saying about coming out to friends friends tend to know other gay people and you can lean on those Mm -hmm. friends to introduce you to those people does that what happened to you? no I mean people have introduced me and I I not really (laughs) (laughs) I've said they're not my type or you know I haven't found anyone through that but I've I found people from like 
Do any LGBT societies? Do you think that's why the LGBT community is so important? Not just yeah. both to both to feel included in something, but also just practically kind of for making relationships mm. and, and meeting people in a comfortable space where you know other people it's are. It's good that you say comfortable. I think safe spaces are really important. You know, a place where people who identify as being LGBT can go knowing that they're only fully surrounded by those that identify as being LGBT themselves mm -hmm. so you fully understand what each other are going through. Do you think through. that's important though? I mean in terms yeah. of just having just solely community, does that not create more separation between no, LGBT people not and really. non-LGBT people? No because I feel like quite commonly people who identify as straight would surround themselves organically with people who are just straight themselves. Right. Um, and those provide, you know, the, the commonality and the bonds and the friendships, etc. You know, I do think that people should branch outside of those groups. I'm not saying that they should stay stuck in a silo. But I think that these groups where you're surrounded by people who are the on the spectrum of LGBT yeah. is important. We use the word ally. Like, I mean, what is an ally in terms of... Well, being an effective ally is an ally that identifies their privilege, I guess, of being non-LGBT um, and therefore stands up and supports the community that does face discrimination. Right. So what, I guess, as like a, a, a heterosexual person, what, or someone who identifies as heterosexual, what does it mean to be an ally? And, and I guess, like, am I an ally? Like, do I have yeah. to sign up for something? <laughs> like, I know, but I mean that seriously. No. Like, I feel like... No, I, I think it's really just recognising that um, people who are LGBT do sometimes suffer discrimination. And right. it's really standing up and being a voice and being a friend to someone that's maybe in the community if someone's coming out, like I've said about yeah. friends, being open, being supportive, being there um, to really just, yeah, provide again allyship to that community so going back to relationships yes okay <laughs> Dom does not want to talk about at all <laughs> do you go to kind of non-gay nightclubs or would you always go to gay nightclubs or was that different when you first started I think it's just how gay? yeah I guess for me I prefer to go to clubs go to spaces that identify quite openly as being LGBT inclusive. Right. Um, I guess it's just how I came out really, you know, I came out uh, when I left an all boys school um, to mm -hmm. a college that was accepting and then I, and that college happened to be within Brighton. <laughs> which so in Brighton you can't really yeah, fail to find yeah, an LGBT find gay, and inclusive yeah, yeah, yeah. space. Yeah. And it was there sort of that I found my identity and right. I found my belonging and my group and right, my okay. community. And so then for me, it, it's been just what I've known and, and so mm -hmm. those spaces feel more comfortable. And so I, you think it's yeah. more that you kind of feel, it's not so much an like wanting to find people you, who you're attracted to, it's more just that you no, know that, just that, 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 that friends space, there again it's a safe space right, it, yeah. it, if you were to kiss someone there mm, you wouldn't you, have people looking at you or, yeah. no but in, in no, the way no, that no, you, but, yeah, you probably would, would outside of a yeah. uh, gay nightclub right, yeah that makes sense to also, me. Also I feel like it's more secure, like yeah. you hear so many stories of people leaving nightclubs and being beaten up up right, or yeah, being yeah. attacked because of their their identity um, and so you know the the policy and the bouncers and the whole setup of an LGBT inclusive nightclub is much more secure and safe yeah 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 I hadn't really thought I hadn't really thought of that either yeah it's there I can see that <laughs> okay let's go yeah um, so we've done yes what was that actually for me? <laughs> oh We've, We've done, done coming out. We've done yeah. identifying as going coming out, and yeah. then relationships. And I think, yeah. kind of last of all, we wanted to. I want to talk to Tom about kind of his experience in terms of where he's at mentally with moving forward towards family, and whether he kind of thinks about having children. Like, we're, uh, how old are you? <laughs> I'm only 23. This You're 23. Very, this is yeah, very so premature I'm, I'm, for I'm me. I'm 23 too. <laughs> are you thinking about it at this stage? No. <laughs> But like it's, I guess it's kind of like no. part of the narrative, right? Of yeah, like okay. the kind of get a job, which we've. Yeah, the board and done. I think there is sort of this idea that people who are more are on the LGBT spectrum having my drink. drink. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, it's nice though, right? Okay. Um, <laughs> Should have taken the No, I one. think there is just sort of an idea that those who identify as LGBT 
aren't going to have a child, aren't going to yeah. form a long-term relationship and aren't going to have that family unit. Yeah. I think for me that isn't necessarily true, you know, I think in the future, definitely not at 23, yeah. I would, uh, yeah, consider, yeah. Yeah, yeah no, no, of course and not now. And adopting but... and, but also like, the narrative is so new. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's no kind we of a get fixed to, path. Yeah, we get to define it. So, yeah. or we, and that's kind of nice to have that freedom. Like, you're not going to have sort of people putting deadlines and pressures yeah, yeah, on yeah. you. Um, you know, like I know that for some of my friends, that you know, family members are very keen for them to yeah, you know, yeah, meet it's... milestones yeah. um, at certain points. And I guess those milestones aren't so clearly defined for someone on the LGBT yeah, spectrum. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Mm. Okay, let's finish. Okay. Um, what are your kind of like closing things if you were to talk to someone who is um let's start off with someone who is unsure about their sexuality don't rush mm -hmm. those feelings and also just know that yeah so you've got this whole group of support um, and a whole network that are going to accept you for who you are and then in terms of like people like me who are kind of I guess somewhat ignorant I think because it's such a new thing and mm. such a and you know we've grown up even I mean we're not that old but still with like considerable biases and stereotypes <laughs> yeah. like you know what I mean historically no. yes. that I think it is this kind of entity that I find somewhat scary and she sort of will tiptoe, tiptoe yeah. around and to broke so what do you think that mm. kind of it's something that we should be more open about I think we live in a society that's scared to make mistakes. Yeah. And I think as long as they are innocent mistakes and mistakes that you're very active about learning and educating yourself on why that was a mistake. You know, in school you've had to, you know, um, you must have had to try and write an essay a hundred times before you got it right. Yeah. And so, it's the same with a topic. Yeah. As, but to go full circle, yeah. right? Like when we first started this interview, I said persuasions, which is not mm, not yeah. what the accepted term now. And like that was a mistake that I made. Yeah, and the same with preferences and, because it, pre yeah, yeah, because it denotes it's yeah. a choice. And so I think, and I, feel I think like, it's just yeah, educating yourself and becoming mm. more sensitive to those things. Just exactly. because I say persuasions doesn't mean mm. I'm no. kind of anti anything or think anything no. in particular I just thought you know I didn't realize that wasn't yeah, exactly. the term. what I hope this video would bring up is just some kind of empathy on both sides this is only my narrative yeah and it's only your narrative exactly but I think I hope mm. to a degree that it kind of has brought out some of the issues some of the questions that people um, have and that I certainly had mm -hmm. so thank you no. for doing it no, it's been <laughs> for coming out and uh, yeah I hope you've enjoyed it and yeah, uh, yeah thanks a lot Tom <laughs>